okay so let's take a look at how you can connect to your vm instance made within oracle cloud using putty right so if you first created a particular instance of vm using this create vm instance option you must have one of the instance ready to use in my case i created ubuntu instance and i named it dev ubuntu right so once we have the instance and if it is showing you that it is running the next thing you would be doing is connecting to it through putty so in case of linux you have those command line options but in case of windows you need putty so in my case i will search for putty on google here you can see we have option to get putty there is also sponsored project bit twice and you can use its SSH server or client so in our case we just need to access to vps so we would be using putty and we don't need any additional software so basically we download the putty right so i prefer the portable version if you want you can run the installer version then you will have to search through this but in my case i downloaded the putty portable edition there is also one more tool known as putty gen so it is going to allow you to use that tool to convert your typical key files for ssh into a ppk file which is used for putty gen's password key right so i have downloaded the putty and putty gen also while creating this instance i downloaded two keys one being private and one public right and those keys i can use to access this instance as you can see it tells you instance access that is possible using private key from ssh pair here we have username ubuntu and this public ip address right now if you wish to do some of the changes to your vps like getting access to particular ports or so you will have to edit your submit subnet rules and we will take a look at that part later so for now we will just go to our partition instance so i need this particular instance because i want to convert my key that i generated during setup of my oracle vm and i will open it in partition convergence so go to convergence then click on import key then once you import it will show you this particular fingerprint right so you will have to save this as private key and give it a name something like ubuntu ppk or whatever your image file has name or the name that you choose right once you saved this particular key next would be going to your putty now putty on windows will require few things say you have host name so host name should be your ip address so in case of oracle you can see this is the public ip address copy this right then next would be you will have to check connection type which is ssh keep the port on 2022 20, here and make sure that your subnet rule has access to port 22 right next thing is we will come to the save session option at the end now next thing going to connection and then click on data here you have to choose when username is not specified go for prompt then go for ssh 
here you have to choose auth right so within auth click on credentials here you will have to put that private key file so the private key file that we just generated through partygen i am having this over here that should be the file you would put here right so the partygen's private key is different from the one that you created at the start right so here you will just point to that ppk file right dot ppk file and once you do that you will have to come back here right and you have to save your session right and then click save and then click open right so next time when you want to log in simply select that session click load right then your host name will be something like name of your image file which is ubuntu that becomes your username then at the rate your ip address and rest of the settings would follow right so here let's click open and that should connect you to your ubuntu instance right so if we then use lsp underscore release then dash a as you can see this should give me my ubuntu instance i have used 22.04 LTS version for this Oracle VM. Now I can use my commands, install applications, web server, as long as limit of that 4 GB and 24 is managed. Right, whatever that limit is in your case, within that limit I can use my VM. Right. So now one more interesting thing would be moving on to ports now that you just set up your oracle vm manage to access it through party you will have to take a look at your subnet rules so click on subnet and here you will have your security list right so to go here you have multiple options go to networking from menu networking then you have your network virtual cloud network right then choose your virtual cloud network which would point you to subnet then from subnet you would be coming here which is your security list right so here we will be using our rules who should be getting the access so let me tell you in brief so IP protocol remains TCP what is interest for us is the port part so 22 is the SSH port you access your server through SSH and private key on this particular port right then say you are hosting a web server then you need port 80 8000 8080 open so you'll have to keep them in the rules list as well right then you also have 443 this is the port which is used for https right and you will be doing this through let's say simply copy this 0.0.0 right and then click on add ingress rules so here i will show you your source cidr should be this particular 0.0.0 ip address then source port range you can keep all but here let's say i choose 8000 right so destination 8000 will be accessible as per this rule if you change this to say 5000 or even 3000 which is for most of the python based web servers you can get those accessible simply have to click on add ingress rules and save that particular value once you do all of that 
would be able to access those ports and you would be able to finish the installation so before installing anything on your ubuntu make sure that those ports are accessible so the better practice would be first release those ports by adding them in rules and then come back here and then try to initiate the installation of those softwares like your typical web server or maybe mail server or even let's say script like hsia or so you can then install it make sure to read the documentation of those things release their ports and then install right so this is pretty much the workflow that you have with running your oracle vm and then accessing it through ssh with party client 